Well, this morning we were in 1 Corinthians. Today we're going to continue that. We're going to jump up to 17, 1 Corinthians. And uh, I, I we'll go to 2nd, but I don't think we'll get there. But you know, we were talking this morning about calling, calling. And uh, when you get my age, you've seen so many people call God to do so many things. And, uh, and some of them are pastors. Uh, I've seen so many pastors fall by the wayside. I mean, just time after time after time, uh, people. And yet, if you listen to how we were called and, uh, and how it was a personal thing between you and God, and there's absolute certainty that God has called you to the task, to see so many fall to the wayside is, is, is simply amazing and, uh, and sad. And so uh, today we, we, we were talking about calling and how uh, Paul uh, had, a, had a certain uh, call of God and he was ready to die rather than give up his call. He was, he was there, he was working, he was, he was, he was, he was to his to the death. And, uh, and so he, when he came to, to Corinth, he had uh, many uh, near-death near experiences, you might say, as well as many successes, but he, he seems to be very humble in that he uh, didn't see them as real successes that he had. You know, we know today about the, you know, the different churches, the church in Africa where he just came from before he came here. Uh, we, we, we saw, we, we know that they turned into great churches and, and they reached the whole world. You know, one third of the world eventually became uh, named Christ as their Savior. Uh, and, uh, and so he actually had great success. But when he came, he had a, he had a deep set calling to reach the city. And that's what we talked about this morning. We were, we were giving um, praise for the calling that each one of us have. And, and the calling that we have to our families. The calling, that's the only, that's the only uh, institution that comes out of the, the, the God, you know. Uh, the, the calling that we have to our churches. Uh, the calling that we have to our countries. Uh, but, the, but, the, but basically over all, all of it is God's call. God's in it. And, and God has to be in every area of our life. Every calling that we have, we have to put God first in it. And so uh, when Paul came to, uh, to Corinth, he, he, he asked God how, he's gonna, how he could reach these people. He didn't want another, what he thought was a, a, a failure. But, he, but his calling came from God. And his calling was to reach the world. You know, he, when he, he, he heard uh, from the, the other apostles that the, the great commission that was given, it really struck him to the heart. And, and then he was trained by Jesus Christ to go out into all the world and preach the gospel. And so he went from place to place, and he had a plan. He had a plan. He was trying to, uh, to reach certain areas uh, that, were, that would, uh, would, would, would then, uh, after you had Christians, would then spread the gospel to other areas. So it was. It was. So we went to went to Corinth. We remember this was this was a great business center, world business center, of the, the known world, and, uh, one of them. And uh, he just thought that this was this was a place he had to reach. So uh, so he asked God uh, how he could reach uh, the people for Christ, and that's what we uh, we were uh, ended up at. But Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. And that verse right there is, is, is a wonderful verse. Um, it, it, see, Paul was, was gifted, and he was gifted by God to have a, a great, uh, he was very elo eloquent. So he could wax elo eloquent and just amaze the people out there, um, but he wouldn't get his message across, because only one message, he might get some other message across, but not the one he wanted. He had to make sure that the message he got across was, the, was just that, the cross, okay? He had to always preach the cross, uh, the gospel, not with wisdom of words. That's what he means by not just waxing well, eloquent and just spending, you know, keeping everybody with their mouths again to listening to him. That wasn't the purpose. He had to tell the truth and he had to tell it uh, basic and true, right, right to the heart. Uh, and so, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. And, and, and of course, um, it, the, the, the primary mission of the church is to preach the, the cross. And the cross can be emptied of its power. That's what it says in verse 17b. And you think about it, how would you empty the, the cross of its power? And when I read that, it, it just, to me, it's, it's just like, it's not, it's not possible. How could, how could the cross lose its power? 
But the cross can't lose its power by the walk of the person. If the person bringing the, the, the message, and that could be any of us, if we don't have a walk that is worthy, uh, then the cross loses its power. The people that don't listen to them, they, they, just, they just walk away shaking their head. Uh, it, 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 uh, we have so many uh, examples of that in history of people who could have, should have uh, accepted Christ except for the person who brought the message to him. I, I used to worry about that with rock music. When, when, uh, when rock music, got it, we, 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 we had Christian rock, remember? Rock music, we know that came out of some very bad beginnings. And if you know the meanings of the, even the meanings of what rock music is, you know that it's a, it's a real problem for it to be Christian. And then, uh, and I'm not preaching against rock music today, well, I'm just trying to say this. That I used to have worry that, that when someone gets saved uh, under the power of a rock musician, um, that might not be the, a, good, a good cradle for him to have in order to grow in Christ and become uh, the man that God Christ wanted him to be. That, could, that lifestyle that that represented uh, might not be good. So I used to worry a, a lot about uh, youth groups, etc. And I remember even sometimes I was maybe over too strict about it uh, and maybe, maybe even hurt uh, young people in their, in their walk. But I used to really be very cautious about that. So it, it, you, you can make the cross of Christ to none effect if, if you don't have a good walk. So the Christian is, we, we have to live well. We have to um, have joy, we have to have peace, uh, and, and we have to have uh, a, a singleness of purpose in our life. And over and above everything, it, it has to be the gospel of Jesus Christ. So the one thing that should make you the happiest person in the whole world is when your children receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. Uh, the second thing that should make you the happiest person in the world is when somebody else's children receives Jesus Christ as their Savior. And then when anybody receives Jesus Christ as their Savior, that should make you extremely happy. What you just came in on tonight and said, how many accepted Christ tonight? Six. Six. I mean, and these are elderly people. These aren't children, but these are people that were, uh, are heading for the abyss, you know, and, uh, and received Jesus Christ as their Savior, and now they have a, a, a relationship with Christ. And it has to grow, of course, but it's not going to be, they, they might not have time to make it grow all that much. And you might not see as much change as you'd like to see in an older person, but you'll see change in them, nonetheless. So, um, so the, the cross of Christ should be made and preached uh, uh, with, uh, with zeal. For the preacher of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. So um, that's, uh, that, that's, a, that's a bit of a problem. Uh, uh, the, the uh, men are placed into one of two categories here, uh, perishing uh, or being saved. And that's what it comes down to. A man goes through life having one of these two experiences. One is he's either perishing, moving ever downward toward the grave, or he's being saved, moving ever upward toward eternal life. In the Greek, both words are, are continuous action. That is, a man is perishing or is being saved, one or the other. The words are not static. A man is, it, 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 it is not sitting still. He is he's one or the other. Um, it, he's, he's either being gripped by the, by the flesh and being conditioned to accept a perishing, dying world, or he is ever being saved, more and more being free to walk righteously and godly in this present world. The man who is saved is being conditioned to break loose from a perishing, dying world and to look for the glorious appearing of the new world. So this is, there's a world of difference between, between the one that's perishing, a lost person, and a person uh, that, is, that is saved. That's what, that's what Paul is, is to go in. He has to go in to, uh, to a room full of, of perishing people and some of them are going to walk out saved knowing that they're going to go to heaven. Now, we have uh, different kinds of churches, even in the Southern Baptist life. We have some that are free will. I don't know if you know what free will means. Free will means that they believe they can lose their salvation. So uh, they, can be, they have to be saved over and over again in their life. They get saved, they, they fall, they get saved again, they get fall, they get saved again. And we have free will Baptist churches. But we have, uh, you have also many denominations that are free will. I, I was raised in a free will church. That was really hard growing up knowing that every time I sinned, you know, I would run down to the priest 
and uh, ask him to, to uh, hear my sins so he could, he could give me absolution so I could be saved again, so I wouldn't feel like I'm going to go to heaven. And that was a big thing to me. And uh, I, would, I, would, I, I played basketball, and then after I go through playing basketball, I graduated from high school, I used to go to, I, I coached some, but some of my old school, my high school, and, I, and uh, at, at our junior high, I don't know what group we had then, so, yeah, you don't need to know that, but, but uh, we, we, I coached, and I, I sit down with the, with, the, uh, with the principal of the school who was a priest, and I would tell him my, my confession right over his desk, you know, I wanted to be, make sure that I was saved that day, you know. And it's really a sad thing. I remember talking to somebody who, who uh, had been a Christian for 40 years, and she's dying, and, she, and, and she's in the hospital, and, and I go and I say, well, praise the Lord, you know, you know that if you get better, you go home, but if you, if you and be with your family, if you don't, if you go to heaven, I don't know if I go to heaven. What, after 40 years of serving the Lord, I, you don't know? No, I don't know. Well, see, what Paul was preaching was that they were, they were saved. When you, when you first get saved, you're saved with an ED, okay? Now, all your life, you're going to work out your salvation. God is going to, is going to be teaching you, but you always know where you're going. I, I always know where I'm headed. I always know that at the end of my life, I'm going to be with God, okay? I, I know that. Now, I know that I'm going to have some steps and some missteps along the way, but I know that God will pick me up seven times 70, and I'm going to be with Him in heaven. My, uh, my, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and I give unto them eternal life. No man can take them from me. But Jesus said, you know, my Father and I are, are one. My, my Father hasn't been seen. No man can take them from me. My Father's here. That was His assurance to us. That in my Father's house are many mansions. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you. And, uh, now, here's the thing. You, uh, how do you know that you're saved? Well, the scripture says that those who are saved will, pers will persevere. Okay? So, if you're persevering and persevering, you're saved. Somebody else may have thought they were saved, but if they're not persevering, uh, they're either a carnal Christian or they need to, they, whatever they need to do is they need to get on their knees, okay, and renew their, 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 their walk with Christ. But they're not lost if they truly were saved. They need to, they need to walk. So here, this is, this is what he's preaching. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Okay, so uh, as, we, as we look at these, these, uh, these, these wonderful truths of God, the terrible word perishing means to be lost, to be utterly destroyed, to lose eternal life, to be spiritually destitute, to be cut off. Perishing means to be in a lost state in this world. It means to be aging, deteriorating, decaying, dying. Okay? Matthew 8, 17 says uh, uh, that, that it might be filled, fulfilled, which it was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. My friends, if you know Jesus Christ as your Savior, you are not... Um, you have, you always have hope. Without life, meaning uh, if you're perishing, you one day uh, you're going to have no relationship with God forever. Without peace, assurance, confidence, security in God's keeping. John uh, 14, 27. See, we we're, we're supposed to have assurance of uh, uh, of God's keeping. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, giveth I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. If you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you don't have to be afraid. Those three people that were three that could say today, six. Six. They don't they never have to be afraid again. Because they know where they are going. They are blessed. They are blessed. And so they don't have to be without hope. Um, they're going to live forever. Uh, 2 Timothy 4.18. Uh, it says this, and the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. If you are saved, listen, when you get, you're, you're, gonna, you're, you're having a, a walk with God, you're, you're working out your salvation, but God is going to persevere. You're going to persevere. You're going to be with God right to the very end. When, you, when the time comes and you're dying, you're going to look up and you know how quick it's, you're, you're going to be with God? Death has nothing to fear about. When you die, it's, it's, it's going to be like the rapture. I mean, it's like the, uh, less than a second. It's just like that. And there you are looking up. And there you are you're with God.
by him. It's just that wonderful. And it's just that quick. That's our future. So as Paul preaches this, he, he's not afraid of, of death or dying. He, he, he's, he'll face any danger. Perishing means to be in a lost state in the world to come. It means having to die. Facing judgment. Being condemned. Suffering separation from God and from all loved ones. Experiencing all that is hell. All, that's what that is. That's hell. In this world. But here's the worst part. When you're perishing, when you get to the other end, you're in real hell. You just continue to suffer. And so, how hard and how strongly should we feel about winning people for Jesus Christ? See? When, when Paul faced that hostile crowd, and they were hostile. I mean, they eventually, we saw it this morning, that they took Paul and they, and they, and they dragged him before the judge. And when the judge set him free, what did they do? They took Sosthenes, their own leader, the Jewish leader, and they beat him up. By the way, he, as we saw, he, he became a believer. His whole family became a believer, got baptized. He became a preacher, by the way. You know, <laughs> the Jewish leader. Can you imagine the miracle that was for Paul? To go with it, he's afraid. I'm going to go, do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to go. Just like I've been kicked out of this city. They tried to kill me in that city. They had, they had to lower me down the basket in that city. I'm going to walk into the, 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 the synagogue, and I'm going to preach that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he walked in there, and Sosthenes and all the others were, 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 were hostile and angry. But you know, if he hadn't done that, Sosthenes and all this family would be in hell today. Think about that. But he had such assurance, such peace that God had spoken to him, and that he, he was called out to do this very thing. This was his job. And he stepped out and he did it. So we too need to realize that God has called us to the task. This church, he, 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 this, this church, when we came in here, it was abandoned. It was done. It was finished. God wasn't finished with this church. This is a preaching point. And God brought me and he brought you into this place and said, stand there and preach the gospel. And go out of that neighborhood, to that neighborhood, and preach the gospel. Reach out to lost people who have no hope have no future and tell them about the cross. Father in heaven, we thank you and praise you for this day. We thank you for tonight. We pray that you would watch over us, that you would uh, uh, teach us your ways. And uh, Lord, I, I pray that, uh, that you would uh, remind us of the calling. Yes, when you, you, when you told us to go out into all the world and preach the gospel, that's the same thing you told Paul. That's what you told Peter and John and Luke. You told us all, Lord, to reach out with the gospel, the saving gospel that gives hope and peace and joy, eternal life. And give us that peace and assurance too, Lord. That's, that comes from the Holy Spirit. Give it to all of us, Lord. Comfort us. Give us peace and assurance. And uh, help us in the task that you assigned to us to reach lost and dying people, people that have no hope. Reaching out to them, we pray, uh, with your power and your strength. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.